Hello and welcome to the RTS Toolkit tutorial series. In this episode, we will create custom ability and add it to our recently created Warlock. We will mostly work with ability subsystem and especially with combat abilities. So go to the ability subsystem slash blueprints slash combat abilities folder. Here you can see three important blueprints channeled combat ability, non target combat ability, and simple combat ability. To create custom combat ability, you firstly should create a child blueprint of one of the predefined combat abilities. For instance, I want to create so-called Area of Effect ability or just AOE ability. It will affect all units in the selected area, slow them and curse them, applying damage over time or just dot effect. This ability must be a child of the simple combat ability blueprint. Let's create and open it. Here we can see several settings. If your ability spawns a projectile, like predefined fireball or frostbolt abilities, you should specify your projectile class here. This ability has no projectiles. The next setting is spellcast process class. Spellcast process is basically a blueprint that defines process guy's behavior. Here is two important events you can override in child blueprint: start process and end process. For example, frost mage have an ability to dispel any harmful effect from the target and dispel cast process overrides end process event and in four loops dispels all negative effects from the target. So you can override start process or end process event if you want to add custom actions on the cast start or cast end. Correct target defines target on which ability can be cast. Correct target class defines target class on which ability can be cast. For example, you can create an ability that can be cast only on buildings. Also, we should don't forget to specify an ID for our ability. Ability can apply several effects on a target. Here you can specify effects classes. Soon we will create them. And finally, NCAST particle system specifies the particle meter that should be played around the target. Now we should add this ability to the data tables. Go to the ability subsystem slash data folder and open abilities data table. Add new row with row name equal to your ability ID. Here you should specify ability class and icon. Serving abilities are abilities with small icon in the bottom of the ability bar. If your ability is serving, you should check is serving setting. One time use abilities can be used only once in a game. Also specify ability name and description. Here we can also specify ability cost. There are three resource types in the system. Consumables like tree and gold, allocatable like space or habitation, and stat. Every unit has stat resources like mana, health and so on. But consumable and allocatable resources are bound to the player. Finally, we should specify ability range, cast time, cooldown, AOE range and also check if it is an AOE ability. Here is check nearest executor in range setting. That basically means, should the system check range of every caster in the current selection or only the nearest one? Keep it unchecked for every combat ability. Also, we should open Actors Abilities data table, select our Warlock and add our Curse of Weakness to the list. Now we can test new ability. As you can see, it appears in the ability bar and we can use it but currently it does nothing. Let's add two effects to our Curse of Weakness ability. The first one is Slow effect. It is already defined because Frostbolt ability has the same effect. The second one should be Damage over time effect. So let's create it. Go to the Effects subsystem slash Blueprints folder here you can see several predefined effects, but we will create a new one. Create and open a child blueprint of the simple effect class. Specify effect ID and on apply particle system. Here you can also write apply and dispel events and add some extra actions if you need to. Now go to the effect subsystem slash data folder and open effects data table. Add new row with your effects ID and specify effect name, description and icon. Positive setting means that your effect is positive. 
but receiving damage is obviously harmful effect. Stackable setting means that your effect can be stacked if player will apply it several times. Now go to the ability subsystem slash data folder and open two more data tables, abilities combat constants and custom constants. Add a new row to abilities combat constants with the name of your ability. Here you can specify constants like damage, healing, tick frequency, damage type and so on. I will set effect duration to 10, effect frequency to 2 and tick damage to 10. Now open custom constants data table. This data table is used to define custom constants for your abilities. For example, our slow effect percentage will be defined here. I should add a new row, name it Curse of Weakness Movement Multiplier and set its value to 0.5 because I want to decrease target's movement speed by 50% when I cast it. This data table is widely used in the system. For instance, in Simple Effect Blueprint there is effect constants array. In a begin play event we read the data table info and set effects constants value. Then we can use our constants if we want to. And this is how the slow effect works. It reads our constant from data table, decreases player movement speed in apply effect and increases it again in dispel effect. Finally open our Curse of Weakness blueprint and specify the second effect to apply and also specify effects constants id for the slow effect. Also note that we don't need custom constants for the damage effect but only for the slow. That's it, we just created non-trivial AOE ability. Let's test it. It works as expected. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments section. It is okay if you don't fully understand ability creation process. In the next episode we will create two more abilities and learn more about ability and effects creation. See you next time!